Hey guys, I'm here today in lovely Nairsborough where I'm going to be spending some time with Mark and Rob Hodgkiss from In Hot Property. Now, they were on the podcast very recently and we had a great chat about some of their deals up here in Nairsborough near Harrogate as well as some of their other rent-to-rent service departments down in London. Now, the one in Nairsborough was a two and a half thousand square foot commercial to residential deal. It was the first deal they did with their In Hot Property brand. A phenomenal deal to get started with and they are joining me today to show me around this site so guys tell us a little bit about what we're going to see today yeah so we bought this place in june last year at auction mark was away at the time on on holiday enjoying life on the beach and we'd agreed the ceiling price that we were going to pay for it when it didn't go as high as 185 then naturally we bought it it's all gone relatively to plan and we're getting close to completion now yeah, budget-wise, everything's going well. We're uh, slightly below budget. Um, Time-wise, it's taken a lot longer. We've had some issues, and I'll talk you through some of those as we have a walk around. We're here in flat one of four, and from what I've seen so far, it's a fantastic building. What sort of condition was it in when you picked it up? Pretty tired offices, to be honest. They've been empty for about nine months. Put into auction with the planning permission and listed building consent. We saw on the way up the stairs there, you know, it's a real nice old solid wood staircase that we're coming up. Have you been able to retain any of the original features in the building or has that all had to go to, to transform it? No, we've, we've tried to retain things that we can. We, in fact, the cupboard behind us, um, that was, was another cupboard elsewhere in the building. It's been relocated so that we can use it as part of the kitchen. And we've got various fireplaces and other um, pieces of joinery that we've been able to keep around the building, which gives it a really nice feel. We've now retained probably two of the walls, and that's probably about it. So have you had to make any changes from the original planning app that was submitted? We did have to make a change, and the change actually was because the plans that were included in the auction details weren't actually the plans that were submitted and had been approved. So they've been redone because the windows we've been able to make further space and use the roof lights to give us an extra bedroom. A big commercial unit like this or any large property, you've got lots of options. Did anything cross your mind about maybe selling some and retaining some? The, the real sweetener for operating service accommodation is operating like clusters. So we'll have four in the same block. Um, so then we can dovetail bookings and we can accommodate uh, various different guest group dynamics. And then we've got four assets that are um, positive cash flowing. So your first deal is a two and a half thousand square foot commercial to residential four unit service department block. And your first booking within that is a 10 week booking. It's going pretty well. So our contract for the builder was for 16 weeks. And that was clearly vastly underestimated on their part. Um, and I think the majority of that is because they have had a pretty tight workspace. We haven't got a car park where they can leave skip, set up port cabin offices and that kind of thing. So in a 16 week program, we've added 10 weeks. One thing that I found really interesting in the podcast, and I think there was no hiding my surprise, was that this was your first deal. As a project manager, I've done projects of sort of multi-million pounds. So this didn't feel like an enormous project. I think just the content of it technically is different to what I've done. And bringing in somebody as a project manager that does have that expertise obviously address that. I think the important thing is to consider it as a professional project, mm -hmm. have it as a contracts management exercise. Now we know what you bought this for, 181 and a half, I think you said, but talk me through some of the other high level figures. 181 was what we bought it for. We have a project cost for the builder of 245. Mm -hmm. um, we're paying for project management fees, which is another 15,000. And for the financing is um, somewhere in the region of 15 to 20,000. So the financing is really quite significant on it. I guess that's down to it being our first one level of experience and what we're able to sure. raise against it. We're expecting a GDV of somewhere in the region of 535. Yeah. So we're looking at about 80 grand profit. You didn't get into this to make money on the deal itself. What you got into this for was to give you four profit generating units. We've got a minimum figure of, um, I think it's 40 or 50% occupancy levels um, to sort of break even, depending on the fine, or refinance package that we go for. And then anything on top of that is, is going to be profit. 
So it's been great to see this project up in Knaresborough, your biggest conversion so far, but next up is for us to go down to London. You've got a couple of slightly different deals down there. We're back with Mark and Rob Hodgkiss this morning in Vauxhall Central London now to have a look around some of their new serviced accommodation rent to rent units. And we're stood outside the door to number two. They've just got the keys to that this morning. So guys, what are you gonna show us? What have we got going on down here? We've got all our stuff ready to go. Um, we've taken deliveries this morning and uh, we're gonna get this turned around in the space of the afternoon, ready for guests um, to book from tomorrow. This is pretty much the blank canvas that we start with. They've already got the um, sofa bed, uh, which is great, and some furniture. A lot of the appliances are built in. So, I mean, it's currently midday. You've got photographers coming at five o'clock, so it really is a quick turnaround to start being able to make money on these rent-to-rent -rent deals. There's some time invested initially on making sure that you've got the list of things that you need. Today will literally be putting together flat back things and filling up the kitchen. And we're not quite at the stage yet where we can outsource that to other people, mm -hmm. but we're probably getting close to it. Once we're in a position uh, for photos, that'll be at five o'clock today. After that, then we'll start putting together um, the uh, videos for the Your Welcome tablets. Mm -hmm. So we've got Your Welcome packs in all of our apartments, which gives guests information about the apartment, local attractions, allows them the opportunity to book late checkout, to order meals and things like that from local restaurants. We can record videos, about the property and also welcome guides from us personally. So there's a personal touch without us having to visit the properties and do check-ins on site ourselves. I think people get into service accommodation thinking that it's property, whereas it is more hospitality. So there is the seasonal aspect. And what sort of occupancy do you need then? It, you look at occupancy levels and capacity levels. If I had eight people staying in, anything after nine nights is, is profit four people staying, then it's um, profit after about 13 nights. Okay. Obviously on a rent to rent, it's a bit more risky, um, but at the same time, you've not got as much um, capital invested in there. It allows us to scale up pretty quickly. Uh, okay, Mike, we'll show you um, next door, uh, the finished product, a bit Blue Peter-esque. We put smart locks into each of our properties, then we can change the codes as each of the guests leave, so that the properties are always secure and we've got remote access to be able to make those changes. This is what the finished product will look like next door once yeah, you've worked your magic. Yep, yep, this is it. Excellent, that's looking great. We'll have it all ready for staging um, and then we'll put away all the crockery and things like that ready for the first guests. Okay. Talk me through the finances on deals like this. So the forecast that we're looking for based on what we've done for flat one, which gives us a pretty reliable um, reference point. We've got annual costs uh, estimated to be 32 and a half thousand. Mm -hmm. Uh, average of about 2,700 a month. Um, the income for that is 43,000 or an average of 3,600 per month. And of course it goes up and down because of the sort of seasonality of, uh, of the business. So overall, once we've um, covered the cost of the setup in the first place, we're looking at the next door flat being around 10 and a half thousand profit from this year. Wow, fantastic. But that's a kind of ROI of about 250%. Once you get a few of these under your belt, it's a really lucrative business. Well, I think that's the key thing is the first one or two are hard work, mm -hmm. getting over the hump of, of the setup and understanding what's involved. And, you know, you've got to set up your channel manager. And um, it's when you start to scale that you get to see some of the benefits from those. It's been great to have a look around. I mean, it's going to be a great little earner for you guys. Where do you take in hot property after this? So looking for more rent to rent deals so that we can help that cash flowing part of the business. Mm -hmm. And then the kind of lumpy money, if you like, we've finished Nairsborough or we're about to finish Nairsborough, get that refinanced and then looking for the next commercial conversion deal. Excellent. Well, guys, thank you so much. I'm sure we'll keep in touch long into the future and see more exciting stuff coming out of the in hot property brand. Indeed.